before I start, <coughs> I have to summarize uh, one summary statement because she said many things. <coughs> the fact is that the way we are presenting the sadhana or the knowledge, we have not done the sadhana in that manner. Whatever, even Bhagavad Gita reading in this manner, going into the depth of it, we have not done during our sadhana period. We had some idea, we have been thinking, but uh, we have read the Shastras also, quite threadbare. But the sadhana was mostly whatever Guru has given and practicing that. And that led to the clarity and everything. <coughs> but to present it is also a sadhana when we also, we to understand the things in greater detail and accuracy. When to present something we go through the subject and compare the different shastras, it's a great joy. Joy means it is, we won't call it a sadhana, we call it a joy or in Sanskrit we call it vinoda. Vinoda means to enjoy that. <coughs> So, of course, when we have the faith that the way we are presenting, if it is thought about in this manner, it will definitely help people. What else can we do? Because everybody may not be as serious as we had been in our beginning of sadhana. I remember that after taking initiation for about two, three months, I was not even able to take food. The hand will not go. The whole day there was a trance like that it was within. Going to the institute, fortunately the providence also arranged a cubicle for me so that I closed down the cubicle and I used to meditate sitting inside and I would not know what is happening. <coughs> after the, after six o'clock or 5.30 when everybody from the department had gone, I would come out of the cubicle and sit on the veranda. I was doing this in Applied Physics Department of Calcutta University, Science College. So I will sit on the veranda from where the garden, in, inside garden is fully visible and all. And at that time it will be evening. So I, my best of meditations or experiences I had sitting there. I will be completely lost in that. And then when it, the spell is over, I would come out slowly and then take the bus, bus to stand for two hours to reach home. <laughs> it was like that. So everybody's sadhana is his own sadhana. It runs in a different manner. Baba had shown a diagram that what you, Baba, Baba, because I had studied physics, Baba was telling that your potential energy diagram, if you have a state A and state B, when you go to A to B, the potential energy difference is depending on the difference of the level. Even if you don't understand, you will be. Now, you can go this way, 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 anything you can do. But the, the difference in the two levels, that will be the same. The energy expenditure will be different. If you go a long way, the energy expenditure time, everything will be different. But the difference in potential energy will be the same. Like that in spirituality also, each person is taking a different path. But the states they are reaching, it is more or less the same. The fundamental states, they are more or less the same. It will depend only on how fast you can go, will depend on how straight is your path. And the more open and straightforward you are, the straight will be the more straight will be the straighter will be the path. That is if our mind is quite complicated and we always try to do this, do that, analyze this way, that way. That is there are lot of desires still in the mind which is not taking the lesson directly then the time taken will be more, the energy effort will be more. If the mind is pure and the, you just listen to your deepest desire of 
attaining the truth but not anything else related to that i will become a self realized soul or i will become a saint i will become a sanyasi nothing like that whatever to be done simply to be done then it becomes just like the path of light it becomes a straight forward it becomes a straight path so that is the fastest way so when the truth is presented we should try to absorb the truth as it is not to associate too many things which we have collected throughout our life and all before i went to baba i had studied quite a lot because from childhood not too many but i was not given to reading i was more given to thinking but i had studied to some extent vivekananda's uh, karma yo- uh, jnana yoga then viveka chudamani to some extent some other books on yoga uh, yoga vasishta also to some extent this and that we had studied but when baba said that whatever you have studied is good but now i will put you into the experimental laboratory you do the experiment then all those books they went away i was simply doing whatever baba had asked me to do nothing else then again later on the book started coming that's much later again i started understanding everything in a different manner thereafter once baba asked about the changes i said that even the newspaper i was never interested in newspapers earlier i was not reading also but after the part i mean maybe one year or two years after initiation i became very interested in reading the newspaper but not with the original attitude the whole approach was different i wanted to know the forces acting in the society how the people are behaving how can we understand what is happening to the country what is happening to the world so it was a great interest in reading the newspapers with an altogether different vision so they will come back in their own manner with a new interest and all but my uh goal was not was the just the goal Th- that was always uh, bright in front that makes things faster people often say that when you came to the ashram the there were many difficulties we had to face not knowing the language b- m- there are other other things also many things were there it was really tough swami ji used to say that one day he said that i am very happy that you have passed the exam it it had not been easy at all so people ask that how is it that you went through that and remained on the path without having any we could have gone away from here also many things would have happened could have happened but why did it not happen we have only one answer to that we were always focused on their goal when he came here we were focused on our goal only so what the other people are saying whether they are abusing me or ridiculing me or criticizing me or we have to undergo difficulty in food in this in arrangement whatever they had not bothered us at all because the goal was al- we were always focused on the goal so we have been telling this to many of the present seekers also that that is what sustained us so everybody's life is different all are not coming to the ashram they are, they will be doing in their house also they are also this is the same truth which will work if we are focused on our goal and we don't we are not interested in anything else then there won't be any difficulty at all in life also it was not so easy in everywhere in our post graduate course in our finally when i joined iit kharagpur everywhere i had fought with the director or the principal or the head of the department because that was needed it was full of corruption and i had to fight because things ca- rolled down to that but my focus was not the rattle i take it i used to take it as a game as just a play playfully i have done whatever i have done the goal was still the same thing at one time when they absorbed me as the assistant professor many of my colleagues they thought that i am very clever and i have somehow got the position by click by oiling the boss or anything they might have thought like that 
it is okay let them think doesn't matter it did not affect me at all then very soon when i left the job then they were all shocked that we thought that this boy is a very clever boy who is trying to get the higher and higher positions and high, greater projects and all what is this that he is suddenly leaving and that to going to an ashram so it has been strange for people whose mind is always bogged down in the worldliness but it was never strange to either to swami ji or to baba those who whose minds are focused on the goal they would understand that what led us and how did we cross through everything anyway let us start why did i say all these things namrata mentioned something in reply to i generally say that i don't say that the sadhana is never ending we say that the growth is never ending that you continue to grow as long as the life forces are there sadhana after a certain time it, it we won't call it sadhana it becomes natural i won't call it habit it is not a good word but it becomes natural spontaneous that growth becomes spontaneous wherever you start you go on growing but without any effort without any sadhana it becomes sahaja effort no effort effortless because his life becomes growth oriented so that becomes joy he will never worry about whether i have reached anywhere or not that is the greatest secret of this sadhana of this spiritual life that after some time you will not bother about self realization or this or that you will be fulfilled with whatever is happening and going if somebody says no no you have not yet realized realized okay if somebody says you have realized more than other you are a brahmavit and all that theek hai bolne do hame to pata nahi hua hai ki nahi kya hai <laughs> नमो नमस्ते गुरवे महात्म विमुक्त संगा निवयानंदरसस्वी भूमि सदा पारदयांबुधा नमस्ते नमस्ते विभो विश्वमूर्ते नमस्ते नमस्ते चिदानंदमूर्ते नमस्ते नमस्ते तपोयोगगम्य नमस्ते नमस्ते श्रुतिज्ञानगम्य नमस्ते नमस्ते तपोयोगगम्य नमस्ते नमस्ते श्रुति ज्ञानगम्य हरि वी विल डू द शांति मंत्र कैन यू इंक्रीज द वॉल्यूम अ लिटिल सहना ओ सहना सहनो भुनक् सहनो भुनक् सह वीर करवाह सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीतमस्तु तेजस्वीतमस्तु मिद्विषाबह मिद्विषाबह ओ शाति 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 
शांति 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 ओम शांति 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 ओम शांति 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 फर्स्ट स्लाइड शो द फर्स्ट स्लाइड ये स्टडे वी हैव डन वी विल जस्ट रिपीट चैन इंद्रियानी पराण्या हो दैट इज थ्री पॉइंट फोर टू एंड थ्री पॉइंट फोर थ्री Indriyani paranyahu hu Indriyani paranyahu hu Indriyebhya param manah Indriyebhya param manah Manasastu parabuddhi hi Manasastu parabuddhi hi Yo buddhi paratastu sah Yo buddhi परदस्तु सहा एवं बुद्धे परम बुद्धवा एवं बुद्धे परम बुद्धवा समस्तभ्यात्मानमात्मना समस्तभ्यात्मानमात्मना जहिष्ठत्रुम महाबाहो जहिष्ठत्रुम महाबाहो कामरूपम दुरासदम कामरूपम दुरासदम सो वी हैव यू शुड रिमेम्बर ये स्टडीज डिस्कशन दैट हाउ टू हाउ वी विल रीच दैट इनिशियली द सेंस ऑर्गन्स दे आर पल्यूटेड विद डिजायर द माइंड इज पल्यूटेड विद डिजायर द इंटेलिजेंस इज ऑलवेज पल्यूटेड विद डिजायर सो वॉट हाउ द करेक्शन कैन गो एंड भगवदगीता क्लियरली टेल्स एस दैट ऑल दो द इंडियाज आर वेरी पावरफुल सुपीरियर टू दैम इज द माइंड एंड सुपीरियर टू द माइंड इज द बुद्धि बट टू कंट्रोल द माइंड यू नीड अ प्योर बुद्धि अदरवाइज इट विल रॉन्ग वी स्टॉप एट दैट पॉइंट दैट हाउ द बुद्धि दैट यो बुद्धे है परतस्तु सह सो वी हैव टू गो टू समथिंग विच इज ट्रांसेंडिंग द बुद्धि एंड देयर लाइज द क्लू ऑफ भगवदगीता वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड वेरी वेल इट इज एक्सट्रीमली द मोस्ट फंडामेंटल थिंग and this kama they are saying that yahi shatrum mahavaho kama roopam durasadam in all the upanishads he will find the fundamental problem is the desire although the desire we are having because of a delusion once we understand the truth there won't be won't be any desire but the problem everywhere is desire that is why in whether it is katha upanishad mundaka upanishad or some other upanishads also initially they will present the theory of the soul that how it is immortal how it is imperishable they will speak so much about the world particularly in relation to the soul but then at the end it will end up with this kind of shlokas which i have told many times that yada sarve pramuchyante kamai yasya hridishritah athamatyo amrito bhavati atra brahma samashnute this is from katha upanishad that is when all the desires hiding deep inside the heart are removed then atha matyo amrito bhavati the mortal man becomes immortal atra brahma samashnute here itself is the brahman is attained it is not after the body falls it is jivan mukti here itself he attains the brahman similarly in mundaka upanishad also similar shlokas are there uh, विद्यते हृदय ग्रंथि सिद्ध्यंते सर्वसंशया क्षीयंते चास्य कर्माणि तस्मिन् दृष्टे परावरे व्हेन वी सी द ट्रुथ इन एवरीथिंग इन द सुप्री पारा एज वेल एज अबारा इन द सुपीरियर एज वेल एज द इन्फीरियर इन मेडिटेशन एज वेल एज इन नॉन मेडिटेटिव स्टेट इन इंटरेक्शंस एज वेल एज इन मेडिटेशन नो वेयर वी कैन मिस द ट्रुथ बिकॉज इट इज द आई विदाउट द आई नो एक्सपीरियंस कैन टेक प्लेस so i is always with us without i nothing can happen in us so when we know which is this real i then we realize the truth everywhere every experience the truth is visible is perceptible 
So when that happens, they are saying three things happen. One is that vidyate hridaya granthi. There are knots in our heart, which we generally say that either we call it ego or we call it desire. Actually, it is all same. Finally, it all boils down to the same thing. Chidyante sarvasamshaya. That is in the mind and the emotion, whatever egoistic knots, constrictions, smallness, limitedness is there, they all get loosen and finally completely liberated they get dissolved and chidyante sarvasamshaya what is the intelligence doing intelligence has got lot of doubts in it is this the ultimate is this not is this samadhi is this not always even for a spiritual person also intelligence will have lot of samshayas doubts am i on the right path or not so he says chidyante sarvasamshaya there won't be any more doubts it will be a doubtless state. He will not have any more doubt. Kshiyante chasya karmani. His all the work to be done has been done. All that will go. How will it go? He will still be active. Much more than the other people he will be active. But he will not have the doership ego. He will not also have the enjoyership ego. So he will be freed of doership and enjoyership. So, although he might be doing ten times other people's work, but he will not feel that I am doing anything. Generally, we have feelings like I have done something great, so we have an ego like If I have done something sinful, we have a repentance about that. I have to look after my parents, I have to look after my children, grandchildren or grand-grandchildren. All these are to be done or have done, all these are ego, the doership ego that I have to do this, I have That is the Katritva. In Sanskrit it is called Katritva Bodha. Kat, katri Bhoktri Bhava. Doership and enjoyership. They will all go. So that you will find at the end it is all that only. Which means desireless is the same thing as that. So here in Bhagavad Gita this Kama has been identified. Desires have been identified as the fundamental problem. Our greatest enemy as he has said. Vidhi enam iha vairinam. Jahishatrum mahavaho kamarupam durasadam. It's very difficult to win over this enemy. So, to do that, he is suggesting that this is the step. That it will be better if you start apply the method from the highest step, highest lower down. Because what is it? Generally, the objects, the objective situation, the world is creating attraction and repulsion in us. Actually, the world, there is nothing wrong. It is our ragadvesha, our attraction and repulsion which is there in our mind, that is getting us bound to the world, that we want everything favorable. We don't like the unfavorable things. So, the mind and the sense organs, we have to have, have to get rid of the raga dvesha, the attraction and repulsion it is suffering from. But for that we need the buddhi, we need a pure buddhi to operate on the mind, to make it free of raga dvesha. But the kama is already polluting the buddhi and buddhi following the mind is already trapped by the world. So the trap goes like this, the world is, has trapped the sense organs, following the sense organs, the mind is trapped by the world and following the mind, the buddhi is also trapped. The whole uh, pull is towards the outward, towards the world. We have to invert the whole thing. That is, we have to apply yo buddhe paratastu saha, that which is superior to the buddhi. We have to anchor the buddhi there, so the whole uh, force, direction becomes reversed. So, anchorage in the soul, the buddhi will be able to give the right direction to the mind. The mind has to be anchored to the buddhi and get the proper direction from the buddhi. The indriyas automatically are linked to the mind. Without the mind, the indriyas cannot work. So, the, when mind becomes pure, the indriyas will always become, automatically become disciplined. Even if it is not disciplined, always it doesn't matter. Sometimes Ramakrishna Dev used to say that Luchi Chakka Diya Chila Re Anek Khe Niya Chi Tad Parid Din Pet Chada Galo. He was invited to a house where they had given Chana and Luchi means Puri, you can say. Bengali Luchi. 
and he used to like that very much. So he, he ate a lot. And he is saying that I ate a lot and next day I had loose motion. <laughs> so the result is there. <laughs> so some such, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't uh, create any problem in the fundamental level. Everybody will have this. So now we have to see that how to get the buddhi anchored in the soul. We can call soul, you can call atma is a better term. Soul is not our term. Or in the inmost essence of our being. How the buddhi can be anchored. The whole Bhagavad Gita is on that. That is why Bhagavad Gita is saying that it is buddhi yoga. Bhagavad Gita doesn't say that it is only doing karma. Karma done with the yogastha kuru karmani. Sangam tyaktva dhananjaya. Yogastha, we have to do the karma remaining anchored in yoga buddhi. So the whole Bhagavad Gita, this buddhi yoga and the yoga buddhi is the main topic. Now what will happen, there can be here also, it can be two methods as I had explained the other day the interactional and non-interactional. Let us take the non-interactional, that is simple. Those who are able to meditate, that their minds are reasonably free of desires, free of lot of disturbance. Otherwise, you will not be able to meditate properly. To meditate, one has to be reasonably free of attraction, repulsion, pulling and pushing of the mind. So for them, the non-interactional sadhana, this can be done. What is that? He says that from the sense perceptions, you have, you have to reach the yo buddhe paradastu saha. So you understand that the senses are linked to the body. I am an observer of that. Then the mind, you see that I am the observer of the thoughts coming in, coming out. Now a good thought has come. Little before there was bad thoughts. All these things you are seeing. So I am not the thoughts. I am the observer. I am the witness of the thoughts. The thoughts are coming and going. I am only a seer of that. Then in the buddhi level also, what is it? The buddhi is deciding, judging, doing the vichara. Everything is done by the buddhi. So you find the, the buddhi was very sharp. Yesterday, today I am feeling dull. So, I am not the buddhi. I am able to observe the changes taking place in the buddhi. See, when the clock, the arm moves on the dial, if the dial also moves with the clock, will you be able to understand the time? Nothing, no motion will be understood. Here also, unless there is a stable ground which is non-changing, you will not know the changes taking place. The changes in the body, the changes in the mind, the changes in the buddhi, all I have been observing. Only because the I in us is changeless, it is able to see the changes in all these things. So, I am not the buddhi, I am observer of the buddhi. Then who am I? This question lies there also. Is it not? In meditation you try to find out who am I. So, there the vichara will help you that if we are looking for I, that I is not different from me. That is what I am. The moment I try to discover that who am I, that means I am segregating the I, separating the I from myself. Is it not? I am trying to look at the Atma as different from me. So there is a fundamental mistake in that. The very effort, the very process of your meditation or very effort to find out the I is wrong. Because in the beginning you were you are segregating, you are separating the Atma from yourself, whereas Atma is yourself. Atma is what you are. So, there the point is you should stop looking for anything different from you. Okay? So, there in the non-interactional sadhana also surrender helps a lot. That I don't know anything where to go because this is where I am stuck. Let my Guru take me to wherever or let God, whatever you are doing, you have to Surrender the effort there. By surrendering, it does not matter to whom you are surrendering. If you surrender to God, God may exist, may not exist, it doesn't matter. It is your surrender in the mind that is working. 
Surrender is the effortlessness. You have to reach the state of effortlessness. Oh, I will become effortless. No. That itself is an effort. You are becoming more effortful and you will get up tired. Many cases it happens after meditation you are more tired than what you were before. You, throughout you fight with your mind. And after itna ladai karke ekdam jaise ekdam har gaya sainik ho ke gir jata hai. But we have lost the game and that is a common thing which happens. So, you understand that you have to surrender. To whom it doesn't matter. You have to surrender all the efforts. There are many shlokas like that. One I always quote is from Kato Upanishad. Yada panchavatishthante jnanani manasasaha buddhishthana vicheshtate tam ahu paramam gatim. Tam ahu paramam gatim. That, that is the supreme state. What is that? Yada panchavatishthante jnanani manasasaha. When all the five knowledge um, organs, the sense organs, along with the mind, manasasaha, are still. Now this still word we have to understand very well. Still means it is not sleeping. They are not absent, they are not sleeping. But they are not active. Just like now the legs are not acting, it is steady. Like that, the sense organs, they can see, they can hear, they can do everything, but they are not doing it. They are still. And the mind also, normally the mind will think. It can think, but it is not thinking. That means one should not sleep, then mind has slept off. But it has to be a stillness while awake, wakeful stillness. So, even the buddhishthana vicheshtati, that means even the intelligence, is not putting any more effort. Intelligence is always effortful to know, oh, is this the state or is this not? This is also an effort of the intelligence. So, the intelligence also is effortless. So, this effortlessness, this effortlessness of all the parts of our being, the senses, the mind, the intelligence, whatever they have discussed here, all the three parts of our being, they are all effortless. They are not looking for anything. They are not trying to do anything at all. That is the time the Jyo Buddhehe Paratastu Saha. That reveals. Because that effortfulness spoils the game. Effortfulness means you have become small as a seer and you are looking for something to be seen. The subject and object are different. In this, posi in this position, the subject and object there is no difference. The objects fuse into the subject. That is why we always say that the whole universe is appearing in the consciousness. There is nothing other than consciousness. So this is the method, non-interactive method to get anchored to Yo Buddhehe Paratastu Saha. I think you remember yesterday that question was just started. That if the buddhi is also polluted, how to get anchored in the superior, to that which is superior to the buddhi? The buddhi has to be purified. There are various ways of pur purification. The shastras are discussing only that. Now one is this meditative way where somehow you get the experience of the self. The self experience, that is everything becoming effortless in meditative state. The self, once you get the self experience and it is not limited by anything at all, this is the first thing which gives you a touch of purity, touch of non-limitedness, unlimitedness, infinitude, whatever you may say. You get the touch and that smriti, that memory of that touch should help in your interactive life. Interactions. Otherwise, if you are not able to meditate also, you can start doing the same thing through interactions. How? In Yoga Vasishta it is said, Vichara Tikshnata Metya Dhihi Pashyati Parampadam Dirgha Samsara Rogasya Vicharohi Mahushadam This worldliness, there is nothing wrong with the world. The wrong is with the worldliness we are having. What is that worldliness? Seeing the reality of the multiplicity, that is thinking that all the differences we are perceiving every time, they are the reality. We don't see the unity behind the infinite variety. 
That is the samsara roga. Because what is that? Samsara means samyak sarati iti samsara. We say samsara samsara. Samyak sarati means always it is drifting. In creation all the objects, everything it is always moving. It is always drifting. So this samyak sarati iti samsara, this is our idea of the world. It is in the, our mind. So by repeated vichara, Vichara tikshnata metya dhihi pashyati parampadam. By vichara, what will happen? The intelligence will get sharpened. It is not the ordinary cleverness being generated. Sharpened means it is getting purified and clarity is dawning in the intelligence. By constant analysis, constant vichara, nitya nitya vastu vichara, that is what is permanent, what is impermanent, what is long term, which will take me to the auspicious path, what will not. This constant vichara will make the intelligence purer and sharper. So you have the way to get the intelligence slowly purified so that it can get anchored in the soul and and further, further guide the mind and the indriyas. Now in Bhagavad Gita, this how to get anchored, that is what is the buddhi yoga, he is saying that this is the buddhi yoga, yoga means yuktata, means when the buddhi is anchored in the atma, then it is the yukta buddhi. So buddhi yoga means how to anchored, how to work in this world, remaining anchored in the atma. How to remain, how to keep the buddhi always connected to our real identity and remain active in the world. Now, here the activities are giving you the opportunity because you will find that the buddhi is not remaining anchored. It is slipping and we are getting caught by the world. So those are the occasions where you have to refix the buddhi, look back, do the vichara. That is why it is called vichara, vichara, vichara. Without vichara nothing will happen. Vichara means to understand, to catch hold of the slip and then understand and fix it back in the yoga again. Now in Bhagavad Gita also all are same but it has presented with various concepts. For example, one the fundamental concept is Samatva. In 2.48 it is coming. I am not, Tomorrow I will give the detail if possible. You know already. The Samatva is the one that uh, the shloka is Yogastha kuru karmani sangam tyaktva dhananyaya siddhya siddhyo samobhutva samatvam yoga uchyate. See, here they are defining the yoga. What is called yoga? Samatvam yoga uchyate. Yoga is defined as samatva. So it is not just remaining uh, a little balanced like the managers or directors of the company. That is also samadrishti. But they are pointing out to something much, much greater than that. Why? Atma upam mena sarvatra samam pasyati yo arjuna sukham ma yudiva dukham sa yogi paramomata. It is just, this samatva comes from seeing the atma everywhere. That the whole variety of the world is appearing in the atma. So always seeing the oneness in the multiplicity. Then only you will have the samatva. As yesterday I think Swamiji was explaining that sukha and dukha, both are two kinds of waves. You can say the crest and the trough are two kinds, two different waves in our consciousness, in our mind. So based, what is the fundamental thing there? It is the consciousness. So you understand them, when you understand that both are same, then the difference in sukha, running after sukha, running away from dukha will not be there. Not only that, in suffering also you will then enjoy, uh, there is a joy in suffering. Sacrifice also, there is a joy in sacrifice. That is called ananda. In our shastras it is called ananda. It's not sukha, it is called ananda generally. But Bhagavad Gita has not used a word ananda. Everything he has used sukha. Now this samatva practice, samatva, samatvam yoga uchyate, this is one practice by which you can move from the worldliness to the anchorage in the oneness, in the Atma. That is from the world variety attracting us and repelling us, creating ragadvesha in us, we can move to the point where there is no differential treatment at all. 
the, our soul. Similarly, they have presented the concept of Jajna. This is very interesting because Jajna is a Vedic concept, sacrifice, Homa, Jajna, etc. And in Vedas, the Jajnas are always done with some desire. Because if you want a certain heaven after the body falls, I want to reach that heaven. Or we are not having children, to have some children, we do some yaga. Or to have all the kingdoms, we do some yajna. So it is all desireful. Without desire, nobody will do that yajna. But here in Bhagavad Gita, it has been given a complete inversion. He says that anything you do without desire is a yajna. The two Jajna concepts are entirely opposite. Here it is, anything you do without desire, it becomes a Jajna. How? Suppose you look at the whole nature, the sun is going around, the, the moon is going around the earth, the earth is going around the sun, the plants are growing, the flowers are blossoming, the fruits are coming, falling, the trees are, the seasonal plants are growing and dying. Everything, whatever is happening in the nature, is there any desire anywhere? If there had been desire, the small white grass flower would have thought that, why not I become like the red rose, try to become the rose. But it is, because it doesn't have any desire or any pollution, the grass flower is equally beautiful as the rose. It is our problem that we find more beauty in a bigger flower, in a darker flower and in a richer kutan, I mean sabji. That is, we are always looking for something spicy. That is our problem. Otherwise nature, everything is equally beautiful. The, whether it is garbage or Fragrance, that also it doesn't matter. Each has got its own role to play. So, if the whole nature is moving naturally like this, then can not the human beings also, with their some special properties like their thinking capability, analyzing capability and the capability to change the na nature, which is special for human beings, can we not also become natural? We can, but what is spoiling is the desire. It is just like an uh, insect not allowing the flower to blossom fully. Some of the petals will be crooked. Like that our desires insects, they are not allowing us to bloom, to blossom with our natural qualities. Whatever is natural, a very good artist, he will also go to, uh, what is that, information technology because there is more money. A person who has got very good quality of singing, music or other art or so, he should pursue that normally. Or our society should be such that they, uh, they regard also those qualities as something great. They should not always give more money to the uh, IT people. They should be given money to the others also, those who are pursuing their natural tendencies. So the desires are not allowing us to become natural. Otherwise, we would have been just like nature in everything else we would have gone. So this whole nature is considered as a yajna of the universal Lord. Yata pravrittir bhutani yena sarvam idam tataha svakarmanatam abhyaccha siddhim vindati manata manavaha That whatever is happening in nature, everything is, it's a natural pravritti, it's a natural fruition of everything. Like that, whatever is our swabhava karma, our natural activity, whatever comes to be done, if we do, then svakarmana tamabhyarcha, the su supreme, we will consider that to be an offering to the supreme. We are doing, actually this is, we have to think because we think of God, we have to think of the supreme and we are offering to the supreme. Otherwise, if we just simply do naturally, that is equal. No God need be there at all. We can simply do without any desire, that the desirelessness is the main point. You are all feeling sleepy, must be, no? These are a little abstract concept, but as you further study, you will be able to, it will help you, I think. So, the first concept is the samatva. Samatva means siddhya siddho samabhutva. That means you will be having even vision towards success or failure. Sukha or Dukha, favorable or unfavorable result. That means whatever to be done you are doing, 
whatever results they are coming in their own manner and you will be ready to accept the mind should be always have have the readiness to accept whatever is coming out of it if something is wrong you will correct and do now samatva then yajna that considering everything as yajna of the lord that whatever i am doing in life if i am cooking in the kitchen or we are putting bricks in the building or we are doing concreting or we are going abroad for speaking all these are done as a contribution to the universe yajna of the universal lord that whatever is for the benefit or whatever comes to be done whatever is the capability i have i am offering it to the universal yajna of the lord that is why this brahma arpanam brahma we, we do that everything is brahman so by considering everything as brahman we become offered to the brahman that is our hand legs everything it is all the substratum is the brahman when we become aware of that automatically it becomes a yajna normally we are not aware of that even while taking food we are chanting it but we are not aware of that but actually if we become aware of that then the yajna it becomes yajna immediately so this yajna bhava is the third one then you can say that the f- fourth one is the anything i am saying whatever is coming to me ha huh? first samatva second yajna oh i have not gone to the third acha okay the third one is the 14th chapter where the gunatita concept is then that the whole world is a play of the gunas gunas means the sattva rajas tamas that they are playing through our as it is playing in the nature it is playing through our body also so it is a guna work which is going on गुणा गुणेशु वर्तंत इति मत्वा न सज्जते दट इज इफ वी कैन सी दट द होल यूनिवर्स एज इट इज अ नैचुरल फ्रूशन ऑफ वॉट एवर क्वालिटीज आर देयर इन नेचर माई बॉडी माइंड पर्सनैलिटी ऑल्सो इज फंक्शनिंग बाय द एक्शन ऑफ द प्रकृति एंड इफ यू रियली थिंक अबाउट इट इट इज सो आई एम नॉट रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर माई बर्थ आई एम नॉट रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर माई हाइट और फ्रॉम द मेनली द क्वालिटीज वी हैव सर्टन थिंग्स with the whatever nature or the birth had given me we applying that we have grown certain qualities but that is also originally from nature only so it's a product of nature working by the forces of the nature i call it a phenomenological vision phenomenological vision means that the whole work is going on i am only a still witness of the as the whole nature is working in its own manner this small body mind personality spec it is also going on working in this i am only a witness of that this witness bhumi sakshi bhava they call it so this comes from the triguna tattva that 14th chapter it is discussing gunatita that is gunatita is also a noor a noor becomes a gunatita देर द वन श्लोक इज देर नान्यम गुणेभ्य कर्तर यदा कर्त यदा दृष्टा पश्य गुणेभ्य परम व्यक्ति मद्भाव सोधि गच्छति इट इज सेम थिंग दट गुणेभ्य परम व्यक्ति हियर दस यो बुद्धे परतस्तु सा विच इज सुपीरियर टू द बुद्धि दैट मीन्स इट इज नॉट इन द मेटीरियल फील्ड नॉट इन द ऑब्जेक्टिव फील्ड अप टू बुद्धि इज अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ नेचर बियॉन्ड दैट इट इज नॉट प्रोडक्ट ऑफ नेचर the consciousness is in which the nature is functioning so the moment you go to the transcendental level as here it is yo buddhe paratastu sah there it is gunebhyascha param that the whole world nature is the functioning three gunas but he sees that there is something beyond the gunas also he can he is aware of there is something beyond the guna Um, what is the sh- starting point um, this shloka na nanyam nanyam gunebhya kattaram yada drashtanu pashyati see always we are seeing i am the karta of whatever is being done that is i am finding a karta mark it very well a karta that is doer other than the functioning gunas 
there is a katta who is doing it he says that when the drashta doesn't see any other karta that is gunas are only functioning that is the whole universe whole world whole creation there is no further karta there it's a functioning of nature's forces that's all not only that it is functioning the three gunas are playing but gunebhyasya param vitti he knows something superior to the guna which is not in the functions but which is holding the whole functioning universe on which the whole universe is manifest so awareness of that ultimate transcendental truth then he becomes mad bhavam so saha adigachati krishna says that krishna is a knower so he has identified himself with the universal atma or brahman so he says that the person who does not see the katta behind these gunas he attains my bhava that means he also becomes a knower is it understand you then the ultimate there are many others also these are all part of the buddhi yoga what i am trying to tell you is that understand this buddhi yoga is the yoga you are practicing that is through intelligence understanding you are approaching the yoga that is yoga means atma becoming brahman the atma getting dissolved in the universal atma or brahman but this you are approaching through the buddhi how are you approaching either thinking of samatva and always incorporating samabhava in sukha dukha um, enemy friend wherever the seeing the oneness in everything or you incorporate the jajya bhava that whenever you are doing i am only offering it into the universal jajya of the lord there is nothing you will find that immediately the tension will go you are doing something whenever you are doing that katri bhava the doership is in causing some tension in your brain when you see that the uh, it's a, i am a product of nature i have certain co- qualities with that i am doing i don't know whether i will be successful or not it doesn't matter at all have that phenomenological view incorporate it in you then you will find that all tensions have gone that is how whatever we do becomes an offering similarly the these are all part of buddhi yoga the ultimate one is the surrender that means samarpana buddhi or you can say uh, what is the sanskrit name mm. sharanagati both are same sharanagati what is sharanagati finding that i have no do she will do the same thing again but you do it with the when you have the ego you say that no i am only a instrument of the lord i am not doing anything so the sadhana part is sharanagati that whenever the ego is coming in you are trying to dissolve the ego by thinking of atma or thinking of brahman or thinking of god or thinking of bhagavad gita whatever you need for that that ego has to be dissolved that i am only trying to do whatever has comes on whatever has come on my way with the power given by nature and i am not responsible ami jantra tumi jantri the shama sangeet is there that he is working from within making me do whatever i am doing so people will take it as an excuse when they do something wrong i am not duryodhana always used to quote that just the opposite of it i don't have any responsibility it is not for that so actually sharanagati when we come to know that i am not doing anything it is the gunaguneshu vartanta iti matva na sajjate then you come to know that i am already surrendered i don't have to surrender at all because it is the my body mind personality is a speck in the whole universe and it is doing its duty with its own buddhi own introspection that those are all nature's work they are doing that i am nowhere doing anything on my own so that gives the buddhi yoga the final the sharanagati is the ultimate and the sharanagati becomes real only in front of the guru why because before that you will say that i have surrendered to god anything everything actually you surrendered to your desires and other things and say that i have surrendered to god our narayana tithadev used to say that baba has written in his diary he went to see him and there in the diary he has written that uh, 
সামারপনা ওটা কি অত সহজ রে শরণাগতি কি অত সহজ রে ভগবান আছে কি না জানি না ভগবান কোথায় আছেন তা জানি না উনি অ্যাট অল আছেন কি না তাও জানি না আর ভগবানকে সব দিয়ে দিলাম কি করে তুই দিবি হি সেইং দ্যাট ইজ সারেন্ডার সো ইজি উই আর সারেন্ডারিং টু গড উই ডোন্ট নো ওয়ার গড লিভস উই ডোন্ট নো হোয়াট গড লাইকস উই থিঙ্ক দ্যাট হোয়াট এভার লাই লাইক গড লাইকস দ্যাট ইজ ওয়াই দ্য প্রসাদ আই ইন ইচ স্টেট ইজ ডিফারেন্ট হিয়ার সামথিং ইন রাজস্থান সামথিং ইন কাশ্মীর সামথিং অ্যাকর্ডিং টু দেয়ার ওন টেস্ট ইট অ্যান্ড দেয়ার সেইং ইট ইজ গডস ইস্টা গণেশ জি কা লাড্ডু পসন্দ হয় আই আপ্পন কা কে পসন্দ হয় আমার পতা নেই পায়সম পসন্দ হয় গুরু আয়ুর আপ্পন কা জাগরি পায়সম পসন্দ হয় কুছ কুছ ও হমারা জো পসন্দ হয় ওম ভগবান পে চড়াতে হ্যাঁ সো হি ইজ সেইং হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ काली हाँ हम मीट खाना पसंद करते हैं तो उसको काली के सामने उसको मारते मार डालते हैं तो काली का पसंद है बलि दैट बलि मीन्स द सेक्रीफाइस एनिमल सेक्रीफाइस वी आर डूइंग बिकॉज वी लाइक टू ईट द एनिमल फ्लैश वी आर इम्पोजिंग इट ऑन काली सो वॉट ही सेंग इज दैट वी डोंट नो वेदर वॉट गॉड लाइक्स वेर वेर ही लिव्स एंड इवन वेदर ही इज देयर और नॉट ऑल्सो वी डोंट लाइक डोंट नो then how can you surrender to such a god so the surrender becomes meaningful when god comes before you as the guru then you will find how difficult it is to surrender he will ask you to do all what you don't like <laughs> not intentionally but it will happen for your benefit whatever you dislike you will find it very difficult to do it and you will find out 100 excuses to tell your guru that why am i not doing it every time or what you have failed in doing small small things when the guru points out you will start putting forward many excuses the why i did it she did this another person did this and that is why it has happened so i mean i have not done this like this so the real test of sharanagati comes only when you have to listen to guru's words remaining in front so that it, you are caught that you are not listening otherwise at home you will say that hamare wo jo aapke man mein aata hai wahi bata denge ki guru humne bataye the ye कभी बोला भी नहीं होगा गुरु फिर भी आपके मन में लगता है कि हाँ हमें गुरु बोले हैं वी फाउंड इन अ हाउस वी हैड गॉन फॉर हाउस विजिट अ फोटोग्राफ ऑफ स्वामी जी विथ अ कोटेशन रिटर्न सो ही वॉन्टेड टू गेट इट ब्लेस्ड बाई स्वामी जी वेन यू प्लेस्ड इट इन फ्रंट ऑफ स्वामी जी आई नोटिस दैट अरे द कोटेशन हुज कोटेशन इज वो तो स्वामी जी का ही है ना कभी नहीं हो सकता स्वामी जी कभी ऐसा नहीं बोल सकते हैं नहीं हम उसको थोड़ा एडिट कर दिए हैं बिकॉज वॉट स्वामी जी हेज एक्जैक्टली सेड ही विल फाइंड इट डिफिकल्ट टू फॉलो एंड ही इज हैंगिंग इट राइट इन फ्रंट ऑलवेज हीज टू सी सो इट विल ए प्रेशर ऑन हिज माइंड सो ही इज जस्ट एडिटेड मेक मेड इट अ लिटिल इजियर विच ही कैन फॉलो सो वी हैव लॉट ऑफ एस्केपिजम वी नो हाउ टू हाइड एंड हाउ टू कवर अप अवर रे सो इन फ्रंट ऑफ द गुरु दे ऑल गेट टेस्टेड आई विल स्टॉप देयर there are other ways also in bhagavad gita quite a few methods but more or less i have covered them but they are all same actually in one verse he is saying it is 2.64 after that yesterday i have done uh, uh, vishaya uh, dhyayato vishayan pumsa that krodha and all the whole sequence after that just the shloka after that 2.64 ुक्तस्तु रागद्वेशुक्तस्तु विषयानिंद्रियर विषयानिंद्रियर आत्मशैर्धेयात्मा आत्मशैर्धेयात्मा प्रसाद मधिगछति प्रसाद मधिगछति ही सेज दैट दिस रागद्वेश इज द फंडामेंटल प्रॉब्लम इन सम अदर प्लेस ही सेज आसक्ति द शक्ति इज द संगा इज द अल्टीमेट प्रॉब्लम दे आर सेम रागद्वेश इज क्रिएटिंग द क्लिंगिंग टू लाइक्स एंड हेटिंग डिसलाइक थिंग्स दैट इज सेम एज शक्ति सेम एज द संगा नथिंग डिफरेंट सो द रागद्वेश इज द फंडामेंटल द टू पॉइजनस टीथ ऑफ द स्नेक if they can be removed they can be easily removed by when we know the truth it goes because you know that everything is atma but during our practice our sadhana time we have to remove it by our practice suppose you don't like to that is what happens in coming to the ashram whatever you don't like swami ji ask you to do 
So because Swamiji has asked you to do, you have to do it. Suppose you are feeling very lethargic, a little temperature is there, now seven days I will not go to the ashram, my food will come to my room, I remain in the room. But you will not be able to do it if there is something, some advice or guidance is there. So if we can get rid of the ragadvesha, then a person who is freed of ragadvesha, Vishayan Indreshcharan, he will move in the same world, the world is not going to change. But he will not be disturbed by the clinging to what he likes and hating what he dis- dislikes. Ragadvesha Vyukta Istu, Vishayan Indreshcharan, with the same Indriya, same sense organs he is interacting with the different Vishayas. But he is not getting affected, he is not getting small or constricted by that. How? Atma Vashair. They are under the control of the Atma, just like the previous I showed about the chariot also. They are working under the guidance of the Atma. The Buddhi is anchored in the Atma. Atma Vash, they are not Vishaya Vash. Generally we are all Vishaya Vash. Means we are guided by the worldly situation, worldly attraction and repulsion. By that the mind, buddhi, everything is guided by that. So we are under the control of the worldly situations. Whereas he is under, he is guided by atma, atma from his inmost point. That means his buddhi is anchored well in the atma and he is guiding the mind and the indras in that manner. Vidheya atma, atma vashir vidheya atma. He is, has some uh, some discipline originating from within. He That is why we don't like the word control, controlling the senses. No, nothing is controlled. By control, no permanent p- purpose will be served. It will fail, finally. So what we need is an inner guidance, inner harmony. He works by that inner harmony. Vidhya Atma is that. That he... Whatever prompts from deep within, his buddhi is already anchored in the soul. So according to that guidance, he does whatever to be done. It's a great harmony because the senses, the mind, the buddhi, everything is harmony with the inner presence. Atma vashir vidhya atma prasadam adhigachiti. What is his benefit? His mind is always cheerful. Always prasada means placidity. That is in Sukha also he is placid, in Dukha also he is placid. In danger also he is having the smile, in favorable conditions also he will have the same smile. So this is the slavery to mastery I have given the title. Oh, he has not shown. This is the third page. We will stop because I have already, the question hour. Ten minutes I have taken away. Now five minutes I will give you. Tomorrow shall we have only question answer with some little tidbits whatever I have missed. Is it okay? Hmm. Uh, No, you don't have to manufacture question. If you have a doubt, you ask. In the class also. Is it okay if we can... You are saying something. Two. Now one, one letter ask. Yesterday also I told you. Put the chariot on the screen. Let them see the chariot. In the first method, that is the meditative method, uh, you said that um, uh, you would have um, stillness of the mind and indriyas and the buddhi to be able to effortless effortless to get a touch of the divine. And that can happen only if a certain amount of purification has already taken place. No, it, that is why yesterday I said that it can happen with the help and of the, the guru, of the guru, guru also. Yes. The tr- sitting in yes. meditation with the guru, you may just like that also. Be able to get that. So you get a touch of it. Otherwise, you have to, to some extent, purity. Because then that becomes to an some extent, purity to zaru chahiye. Because all these are we are saying very simply, but these are all very rare, rare. Huh. Uh, um, uh, se, um, mm. ye tha ki when you say uh, 
sukha dukha and um, you know the different kinds of emotions i understand that so it's very difficult to see uh, oneness in multiplicity of human beings i don't know how to do that ha huh, that is why the vichara is necessary that through vichara when you come to know that the whole world is appearing in the consciousness alone so it is not that in with the eyes you will see that everything has become consciousness it is not like that it's a vision of the buddhi it is called ikshana ikshana the vision of the buddhi that you will not have any more doubt that it's all an appearance in the consciousness so you will not have the so much of clinging to what you like or hatred for what you dislike you understand it just like it the devotional people they incorporate this samatva by thinking of his god ishta deva a shiva worshipper try to tries to find out shiva everywhere everything it is the same thing from multiplicity to oneness by because he is fond of shiva he tries to sh- see shiva in everybody even suppose a person is abusing him or is inimical towards him if he can impose that way, well this is also shiva's form this person has come to teach me something in the form of shiva has come in the form of the enemy in the form of the abusing person you will find that the, all the the tension stress everything will go you will be able to accept the world as it is shall we stop or it's uh, two minutes at there I have not spoken about Adi Jajjam. Whatever I have spoken, I have not been able to clarify. <laughs> That is not Adi Jajjam. Huh? Huh, conclude. Adi Jajjam is coming in another chapter. Om Sahana Vavatu Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadhitamastu Tejasvinavadhitamastu Mabidvishavahai Mabidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Jai Guru So tomorrow I will try to spend more time on question except clarifying some of the concepts I did in Hari so I could see that people are yawning so tomorrow I have the responsibility to clarify further sir